How many of you guys know what the Big Bang Theory is? And I'm not talking about the show. Okay, so for those of you who put your hand up for both of them, you probably only remember little whispers from some sort of science class that you guys took in like sixth grade or something because they don't cover this kind of stuff. Well, you guys might, do you guys know what it is? Like what it actually is? And some of you guys might be thinking, well, it's in the name, it's a big bang, and that's what happened. And as the man who did all the research for this essay and put it together, I, I know what I'm talking about for the most part. I gotta say, uh, well, yes, but actually no. The Big Bang is a little more complicated than that. So, it's got more of, there's a timeline to it. Um, in this speech, I'll talk about the timeline. I'll talk about um, what it is. I'll talk about how we can observe it and what came before it, if something came before it. So let's get to it. Okay. In layman's terms, the Big Bang is the rapid expansion of something that was microscopically small into something that was this. So it's estimated in the first 10 to the negative 47 seconds of the Big Bang happening, it grew from the size of a billionth of an atom to the size of a grapefruit. In perspective, that would be a tennis ball growing to the size of 90 million light years across. So that's, that's, that's pretty big. All within, you know, point zero 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 four seven seconds. So let's start at the beginning of the time. So, oh man, I forgot to put this. Okay, I skipped some parts, but I'll get back to it. This is Georges Lumière. He is a Belgian Catholic priest who is also an astro astronomer and a physicist. Um, he had the idea of the singularity, which is everything starts at one single point. That grew to the size of the grapefruit, as I stated before. So, the very first part was a very small, indefinitely dense, indefinitely hot piece of speck in the middle of nowhere about 13.8 billion years ago. This was called the Planck era. During this era, nothing, the four basic fundamentals of the universe, gravity, electromagnetism, uh, and strong and weak nuclear uh, fission were all fused together, which is assumed. Then, like that, bazinga! Something fast happened, and it got hot. Really hot. This is called the GUT era. I forgot to write down on my note card what GUT stands for, but it stands for something scientific. Um, in a lecture given by, what's his name, Dale E. Gary, a professor with a BS in physics and a PhD in astrogeophysics, he has a lesson which is numbered Lesson 46, which is really interesting to read about, that talks about all the different eras. So, next is the electroweak era. This is towards the beginning of the first formation of the first atoms which would be later known as helium. Then is the particle era. Particle era, is that my uh, Yeah, I completely forgot what that one is. Then it's particle of nucleosynthesis. This one took me like three minutes to figure out how to pronounce correctly, so that's fine. Nucleosynthesis. This is the electrons in the universe starting to become things. It's starting to gather around the helium. At this point, only three seconds have passed since the Big Bang. Next is the longer part, the era of nuclei. This is when all of the electrons started going to the helium and all of the atoms start molding together into stars. The era of atoms is when they officially start, or officially stars. And the era of galaxies is where we are now. It went from one billion years ago to now. 
Renaissance. So it's the longest of any of the eras, and it's the one that we can prove definitively. What did we get from the Big Bang? Well, many uh, not important things. You know, like gravity, also time and space, uh, particles and antiparticles, cosmic microwave radiation, and you. So, speaking of electromagnetic, uh, I mean cosmic, uh, cosmic microwave radiation, that is one of the two or three ways we can actually prove that the Big Bang happened in some sort. So, this right here is the observable universe. Fun fact, the entire observable universe can fit inside of Texas. So, this is a x-ray of sorts that measures the different electromagnetic uh, radiation that comes from the various planets. Earth, our universe, our, our own little galaxy is somewhere right there in the dark blue zone. There's not much around us, we're pretty boring. But there's a few big old super clusters there and there. Um, so with it, we can hear, we have a device that can actually hear the waves going through, like water. When the Big Bang happened, it left ripples, blah, 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 blah. It sounds like it's breathing and whatnot. It's really cool. If you actually ever find something to listen to, I forgot to put it in here because that would waste too much time. The second theory, the second way we can prove it, is thanks to this guy. Um, Edwin Hubble. Named after, well, not named after. The Hubble telescope that you guys might know of is named after him. He discovered that you can actually see it as well. So if any of you guys have heard of the Doppler effect, it's something with sound, the speed of sound. Whenever a uh, car or something is driving by you, it's loud, louder and high pitched when it's coming towards you, but it's quieter and lower pitched, like meow, like that. The same thing can be said for light. So if it's moving away from us, the light shades to red, which is called red shifting. And if it's coming towards us, it turns blue, which is called blue shifting. Creative, I know. Um, this is the example of the Doppler effect, but in light. So, now, what happened before? We really don't know. There are about two theories. Um, the main theory is supported by this guy, Mr. Stephen Hawking, a great scientist who recently passed away. And his wise words, what came before the Big Bang? Nothing. Or at least that's a paraphrase. What he said is, well, there isn't such a before, because before the Big Bang, time and space weren't separated, so it's the same thing, so it's really kind of foolish to figure out, figure out what came before. But that's not fun. Next theory is called the Big Bounce Theory, which is a ginormous universe like ours today, that collapses on itself. So, basically, it's a big universe that crumples in, implodes, which is what happening, is happening there. It's imploding, and the force of it imploding is so powerful that it made a chain reaction that caused another one, ours, to come about. And people think it could happen on and on and on. And a good uh, connection to this would be reincarnation, which in many religions is once you die, you your soul goes to inhabit another life, and you live continuous lives over and over and over again. Yes. So, to wrap it up in a nice little warm blanket, the Big Bang was the rapid expansion, often, of an inf infinitely dense point in space, expanding to the universe that you know in just about three minutes. It's what created all and everything. It's, it's able to be proven. It's been able to be disproven, but it's also been able to be there. Um, so I talked about the timeline. I talked about the proof and about what it is. Thank you for listening.